and welcome to the Mental Health Hotline. If you are obsessive-compulsive, press 1 repeatedly. If you are codependent, ask someone to press 2 for you. If you have multiple personalities, press 3, 4, 5, and 6. If you are paranoid, we know what you are and what you want. Stay on the line and we'll trace your call. If you're delusional, press 7 and your call will be transferred to the mothership. If you are schizophrenic, listen carefully and a small voice will tell you which number to press. If you are depressive, it doesn't matter which number you press, no one will answer you. If you are dyslexic, press 69696969. If you have a nervous disorder, please fidget with the hash key until the beep. After the beep, please wait for the beep. If you have a short-term memory loss, please try your call again later. And if you have low self-esteem, hang up. All our operators are too busy to talk to you. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back and enjoy Mega Greetings and welcome to the Mega Meeple. This is episode, well, actually this is season four, episode one. Yes, uh, what is it, uh, about a month or so ago on April 20th, uh, marked the uh, three year anniversary of the Mega Meeple. So yes, happy anniversary to me. Yay! Yeah, it's hard to believe I've been doing this for three freaking years. God damn. <sighs> yeah, yeah. <I'm laughs> but yeah, I am recording uh, deep underground in a bunker in an undisclosed location. <laughs> in in uh, social, physical isolation, uh, in uh, quarantine and all that shit. So, uh, uh, well, I, I, I thank you, everybody, for... Uh, Smashing that download button. Uh, appreciate it very much. I hope everybody is uh, safe and healthy and sane. <laughs> yeah, uh, so <laughs> as sane as anybody could be in the state of world as it is right now. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm currently under, uh, uh, it's not just quarantine, uh, I am under direct orders from my doctors to be, uh, quarantined and, uh, social isolation and all that stuff, uh, so, yeah, uh, it's been a few months now, uh, I, I think at the time of this recording, I think I'm well into my 56th or 57th day of uh, isolation, uh, I've uh, I've basically been told by the doctor that yeah you uh, yeah even even if I go out because I, I there there was a uh, recently uh, our, our Pathfinder group uh, was hoping to get back together again because uh, North Carolina has recently uh, just started to ease the uh, the restrictions. As far as, uh, you know, uh, businesses opening and stuff like that, uh, that uh, we were uh, going to get together and, and, and redo our, our, you know, restart our uh, our uh, Battletech uh, campaign. And, uh, I mean, it, it, things were going well. I mean, here, uh, and that's one of the things that I really, really starve for right now is uh, just the... Uh, social contact and I've talked about this uh, I've reiterated this numerous episodes in the past that you know board, board games is is a great thing it's a great hobby but the thing that makes it so special is that social interaction getting together with friends creating memories and uh, meeting new friends and introducing uh, more people into the hobby uh, can, they could only be uh, uh, friend, friends you haven't met yet and uh, we were our, our our Friday night group was into a to a rhythm there for quite a while, where uh, you know on on one Friday night we get uh, together to play uh, BattleTech, 
And then the uh, the alternate Friday nights, uh, people come over to the Mega Meeple pad, and uh, we would uh, play board games. And we played a lot of board games uh, for, for a number of months when we started doing that. And uh, we even uh, started uh, up again our uh, uh, the campaign of Mechs versus Minions. And we got as far as the second mission, and I think the, the, the week that we were going to do the third mission... That's when this shit hit the fan as far as North Carolina got its first uh, coronavirus uh, report. Uh, so uh, that's the time that uh, uh, that the North Carolina was basically a, a shelter-in-place uh, thing. Uh, and they, they just recently, like within the past week or so, uh, started to relax those things. Uh, our, our governor is uh, going through like a he's laid out a three phase progress of far as far as uh, things going back to normal. Uh, although I doubt very much if uh, that the, the new normal is going to resemble the old normal, uh, just of all the things that have uh, transpired during this pandemic. So we are uh, hoping that uh, things are to go forward with that. As long as people uh, keep that uh, six foot distance and uh, only go out when they need to, but uh, yeah, I was I was basically told by my doctors. Uh, if anybody, I'm I'm sure if you listened long enough to uh, my show, you know what my medical situation has been, uh, particularly over the past five months, uh, specifically, and. Uh, yeah, so I I am one of those people that are considered a high risk uh, as far as uh, this this coronavirus thing, and uh, yeah, so I'm under director <laughs> doctor directed quarantine and uh, self isolation, and uh, I I was basically told by my doctors in those uncertain terms that yeah, if you if you come in contact with someone that's a carrier or has had uh, the virus, whether they're symptomatic or not, uh, you, you will get it. And at that point, uh, basically if I got the coronavirus, my body would basically go into shock. They, 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 they made it very clear to me just how much, how important that, that is that I, uh, stay, uh, maintain the course. And, uh, yeah, so, but thank you to all the, the, the medical staff out there that's on, on the front lines, uh, all the, uh, the, the grocery uh, staff and, and cashiers and, and uh, all the people that uh, basically d- in the delivery service, because that's, that's basically one of the ways that I've been able to get food uh, that is food that's available. <laughs> I'm st- we're, we're still, we're, we're still, uh, on the quest for toilet paper, uh, I don't know why coronavirus makes you shit all the time that people had to hoard all this toilet paper. So uh, even uh, those of us who have a uh, who have a health, you know fiber in our diet, uh, we can't get toilet paper. Uh, but I, I've I've done well. I've I have a, I've had enough. Uh, ho- Luckily, I had enough uh, before all this crap happened uh, to last me. But uh, yeah, the the other people that are uh, delivering uh, groceries and pizza. Oh God, if it wasn't for pizza, if it wasn't for the pizza place. Oh yeah, and uh, luckily the uh, the local chapter of my Meals on Wheels. Uh, otherwise, uh, we we call it uh, friendship trays here. Uh, they have been great as far as. Uh, make it sure that the uh, lunches are delivered to people like myself on a uh, regular basis. Uh, they don't have any volunteers to do it, but now they have uh, uh, the Charlotte Mecklenburg police department is doing all of their deliveries now. So a big shout out to the CMPD and uh, them. They're uh, willing to fill in this void uh, so that uh, people like myself uh, can get our lunches um, each day. Appreciate it very much, and then uh, my my friends at the, you know my my friends in gaming group 
have just been uh, great as far as checking in on me, uh, making sure I'm still alive. <laughs> it's like, Dom, you you haven't we're, we haven't listened, we haven't heard a podcast in a while. You you still you still here? You still alive? <laughs> it's like I matter. It's like yeah, I'm, I'm still alive and kicking. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, if it wasn't, uh, I, I think I'd be in a lot worse shape uh now if it if it wasn't for my psychotherapist that that luckily does facetime sessions uh so if it wasn't for that one hour a week with her uh i'd 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 probably be uh yeah i'd probably be in a lot worse shape uh emotionally and mentally than i am now uh, me- means a lot so uh yeah but uh we we'd uh we'd hope to maybe get together again uh with the our Pathfinder group, and I just uh, I just got an uh, order of some uh, face masks, and I contacted my doctor, and they said, uh, even with the face mask, uh, if if you're, you know, in a, in a large group of people, uh, not maintaining that six foot distant type thing, uh, it's it's too it's still it's still very risky, uh, especially in my position where I'm, I'm considered a high risk, uh, for getting this, uh, this, uh, virus. So this, uh, so, uh, the next, uh, few shows as we launch into season four of the Mega Meeple podcast, uh, I, 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 I didn't want to do what pretty much everybody else is doing and pretty much every, what I've heard of, uh, everybody else is doing is they're, they're just talking about solo games. Uh, it's incredible how so I mean, there was a day where solo games were kind of poo pooed on, you know. It was like, oh well, you don't have any friends, so you have to play a game solo. Or it's like, oh, well, oh you playing a game, you're playing with yourself. <laughs> yeah, fuck off. Um, but yeah, now everybody's a big uh, proponent for solo games. I'm gonna talk about the games I play solo. Who gives a shit? But uh, I think what I'm gonna be doing over the next couple episodes is uh you know hopefully uh it'll be a source of entertainment for you and uh maybe if you just you know maybe if you're not just actively listening maybe you just have something playing in the background and i think you might uh enjoy uh these upcoming shows i got uh at least a half a dozen or so uh special guest co-hosts coming on and we're gonna start uh that with this episode right here and we're gonna go across the pond. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't start things easy, you know. Oh, hey, well, I just have one of my friends come on. Well, well, we already did that with Dawson. If you heard that episode, we're talking about uh, tips and tricks of the, uh, the new GM. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're this one. We're going across the pond to my home country of Ireland. So uh, let's. Uh, who am I gonna talk to over in Ireland? Hmm. Well, let's find out as we get to that little conversation right now. Welcome back to the Mega Meeple, and uh, I got uh, a friend, friend of mine here from the other side of the, the planet, and uh, <laughs> we're just going to chit-chat and uh, see what's going on and compare notes between uh, you know, America and, and, and Ireland. Ireland, good yeah. old... Yeah. And you know with a name like Rogan, uh, I'm... I'm <laughs> <so>. <laughs> But uh, I am here with Antoinette Mason. Antoinette, how are you? Hello, greetings from across the pond. Um, I'm good, thanks. How are you keeping? Uh, doing good, doing good. We're, we're uh, uh, I, I, I've, I've lost count of how many days it's been. Uh, I've, <laughs> on the whole quarantine thing. Uh, yep. But as, as we were, uh, as we were. Talking a bit before we hit the record button, it's like, 
you know, it, when when you're an introvert and kind of like to yourself naturally, and it's like, uh, it, it, b- before it's like, yeah, you, we, we, we like to stay at home and, you know, chill and read a book or watch a movie or something. Uh, but we always had that option to go outside if we wanted to. And then now that this uh, whole shutdown or quarantine's going on, it's like, well, now that we can't, we want to. So it's like, <laughs> it's like the, uh, it's just that the, I, I guess that's per, forbidden fruit or something that uh, we just mm-hmm. we just want something we can't have. Uh, it's fun. It's funny, isn't it? It's just, I always think it's strange that the minute you don't want it, you want it, and vice versa. It's 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 like quarantine hasn't necessarily changed my life a whole lot, but it feels like it has in your mind. And I sounded slightly crazy when I said that, but I'm going to roll with it. We'll roll with the crazy. There we go. Um, <laughs> and see where it ends up. But when you spend a lot of your life inside, you don't want to go outside. And then of course, the minute you can't go outside, you want to go outside. Right. Maybe this was a secret ploy to get all the introverts to want to leave their houses uh, i c- could be i uh <laughs> Who knows? it's work it's working <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so. <laughs> uh are, are you allowed to like leave your house at all or can you go out for like a little bit because uh, here in ireland you're allowed to go out like once a day for exercise but we have to keep within like two kilometers of our house because people were being stupid and like going to the beach all of them trying oh. to socially distance at the same time and oh. of course that went a bit awry and was kind of stupid so they're like you can go places but you have to be really close to your house so it kind of li- it limits mm. how far you can go but it can still get out so that's not too bad oh. get out once a day we we could uh taylor we could go out there are people going out um for the most part, they're they're at least where I'm at here in Charlotte. Uh, people are wearing masks. Uh, you you see every once in a while a few people that are not. Uh, but I mean, as as long as uh, you know, I, I think if you're going to like a doctor's appointment or uh, you're you've been uh, deemed as essential, you go to work, mm-hmm. uh, or uh, go get food or a pharmacy and that type of thing. Um, but um, yeah, there, there, there's still still people going out. There, we're not really tethered to where our uh, home is. So because huh. there, there's so there's I mean because Charlotte's kind of sp- sprawled out. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, you know there there are people like you know going half you know halfway across town and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but That's yeah. Cool. You have to be a little bit freer and things like that. Like we're well, getting stopped by the police here. If you've gone like outside your two kilometer radius, you need to have um, a piece of a paper from your employer if you're going to work or something like that, if you're an essential employee. So they brought in a whole bunch of things here to keep everybody at home and keep everybody safe. But it uh, um, looks like we're going to be coming out the other side of it soon enough. Then our government has at least announced a plan for how we're going to ease things up. So I think as of yesterday, you could go within five kilometers of your house, which was very exciting. Um, And then in another two weeks or so, I think they're going to start allowing small gatherings and things like that. So it's good to know there's an end in sight. Um, So (laughs) I don't know how you guys are faring in the States. It it looks like a terrible mess from over here, Uh, to be honest. I I would worry worry for Americans at the moment. (laughs) Uh, So I don't know how you guys are handling it. (laughs) (laughs) Like... uh, uh, yeah, it depends on what state you're in. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. we we uh, here here in North Carolina, uh, we we got our governor. Uh, uh, he does, uh, I guess, daily uh, uh, updates and stuff. Uh, but okay. he announced, uh, I think this just this past week, that we're starting to enter into phase. There's like three phases he's come up with, and Ooh. we're, we're going to get ready to uh, go into phase one of. Uh, opening the, the state back up or get it more mm-hmm. so but uh, yeah. there's a few things that need to happen for those phases to mm-hmm. do well and uh, if any of those things uh, fail or any of those things uh, start to show that it's not doing as well as they hope it to be then they they reserve the right to in a sense uh, backtrack and uh, close things down again Mm-hmm. So, that's a sounds like a sensible plan it sounds like a smart plan to be fair yeah <laughs> good but yeah, uh good. yeah so and, and then we have other other places where uh there, there are people wanting to uh, <laughs> protest <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. And, and depends on who you and, and uh, <laughs> I don't want to get into the whole politics, but uh, yeah, we should it's... we should avoid things like that. <laughs> My bad, it led you down this dark alleyway. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, it depends on who you ask. Some people may uh, say that these people are, are protesters. Others is like, you know what? These people are terrorists. Come on, the, the last the last government. You know, I I've I worked in forensics, so I had to go. Uh, to a lot of courthouses and, and uh, places like that. And I seem to remember in every kind of government uh, building, there was a, a sign that said, no weapons allowed, uh, yeah. be it concealed <laughs> or open carry. And mm -hmm. we see these people carrying these big, long guns. And it's, it's like, arrest them. <laughs> <laughs> arrest their asses and put them in jail. That's terrifying. <sighs> <laughs> I was saying, it seems to be another way to solve your problems. Yeah. All because mm -hmm. Karen wants to get a freaking haircut or something. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. well, anyway, that, that's my, <laughs> yeah, that's my that. soapbox. <laughs> uh, I, I won't lie, I too miss getting my hair cut. My hair is so long right now, it's ridiculous. I think the last time I got my hair cut, it might have been before Essence Spiel, like last year. So, um, and of course, the minute you put something off, a quarantine happens and then you can't do it. Mm. So it's like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I, I too would like a haircut, but um, I'll hold out another while yet. <laughs> yeah. I'll hold out till I'm allowed out. I think there will be some major queues at the hairdressers and the barber shops when all this lifts. I, I, uh, I there, there is so, money yeah. to be made if you are a barber or a hairdresser right now. Just, you know, get get that plan in place. Yep. Make some money. <laughs> they'll, they'll, have a, a, they'll have a waiting list. It's like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you have to put a you have to put a, a deposit down to uh, uh, secure your place in the waiting list. Otherwise, you know, if if your day and time comes up and you're not available, uh, <laughs> that goes to the next person in line. But, exactly, uh, exactly. Oh. See, I, I'm, I'm, I speak from a, a place of privilege because I, I just I basically shave my head, so it's like <sighs> you're so fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fantastic. But mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you are out of, uh, you're based in Cork, Ireland, right? Yeah, that's right. That's or, where or I call as, home. Or as they say, Cork. I see that right. By. Cork by. Cork by. <laughs> Cork by. Yeah, exactly. Cork. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny old place, is Cork. Everyone around here thinks they own the place and that it's the real capital. Um, and they're all very full of themselves, the Cork people. They're very proud folk. You wouldn't want to mess with Cork, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's a pretty cool place. I have to, I have to say, Cork is kind of like a big county, and it's got a little bit of everything in it. So you can be really close to like the city, and also be living near a beach and like a wood, and yeah. all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I just, I think it's kind of a magical place because I didn't grow up here, so I think I appreciate it that bit more. Because when I moved here, I was like, there's so many amazing things to do, and everyone's like, oh yeah, that's just Cork. It's just it's cool, I'm like that. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm I'm quite I'm quite happy that I get I get to live down here and have all these kind of cool things nearby. So yeah, that's that's neat. I went to uh, uh, I was going back a while. Uh, was it uh, 30, 30 years, twenty five, thirty years, something like that. But it was ninety eight, however long that was. Uh, I I went on uh, uh, a two week vacation to Ireland. And nice. uh, it, it was wild because uh, a friend of mine uh, said, Tom, when, when you when you go over there, he said, don't go on tours. Tours go where <laughs> tourists go. Mm. And you want to find out what Ireland is really like. Just just fly over there, get off the plane, start asking for directions. <laughs> so, I mean, I uh, so I flew over there. I flew into Dublin. Um, and this is like in November. It was like, uh, I think... Oh. A week after all the airline fares went went down, uh, so I I did it then. Uh, but yeah, I was uh, the first two weeks in November of '98. I was in Ireland, uh, so I flew into Dublin, and I I had like uh, I had my I, I think my first one or two nights stay already uh, set up, but I didn't mm -hmm. go into any, like hotels or anything. I I did the whole hostel. Oh wow, well, you're brave. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't do that again. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was like, how many junkies so... did you meet? 
<laughs> it's like one of those. Uh, it, it, I mean, that I I met a lot of really neat people. You know, basically most of them were like uh, uh, backpackers and stuff. But I remember uh, meeting a couple from Germany, one from Sweden. Uh, met uh, uh, a few other people from America that was over there from, from different states. But yeah, just uh, going over there and 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 uh, having uh, you know four or eight bunk bunk beds to a room. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> but I I I've noticed uh, now I've. I've been told I snore when I sleep. Okay. Uh, it doesn't bother me because I, I sleep right through it. <laughs> exactly. But uh, I, I noticed as I was I was going uh, going around because again I, I was just kind of making things up. If if I knew I was going to stay in the city for like an mm -hmm. extra day, I would I would just set you know pay for another night, and oh. I figure out okay, well I'll, I'll take the train uh, down to uh, like the, the second place I went down to Cork. And, uh, took a train down there. So before I left uh, Dublin, I'd have like my first night stay set up there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I found that if I was staying at a place for like two or three days, uh, I usually by the, the second day, I think for the, by, by the second night, um, uh, and definitely by the third night, if I stayed longer, I pretty much had the room to myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's a useful skill right there. Because they <laughs> either everybody else in the room either went to another room or they just left the, the, the <laughs> boss all all together and went somewhere else. So by the by the third night I'd have this, you know, eight bunk beds to myself. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> that's a fantastic way to get cheaper accommodation like this is how you would arrange a single room for an eighth of the price <laughs> uh i think hostels though are a cool way to like travel um around ireland uh, for sure there's loads of them in some really cool and wacky places like especially as you were saying like by backpackers and hill walkers like you can go half the way up a mountain and there'll be a hostel there and you can, you can just take a rest there for the night or whatever and continue on your hiking afterwards um I do think, though, maybe you need a bit of research. I don't know if I'd stay in a hostel in Dub Dublin. You're a brave fellow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think if I ever do it again, I'd, I'd, I'd stay in a, a hotel proper. But, yeah, mm. I, I went to Dublin. I stayed at uh, uh, Temple Bar area. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, do you uh, still have your liver intact after all of the drinking? Because that's what Temple Bar is kind of known for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the nightlife. Uh, I was – luckily, I was – I was uh, I forget what, how, how old I was. I was, I was obviously – good 20 30 years younger than i am now so luckily at that point my liver had not been shot to hell at that point <laughs> so it it had it had some had a good uh, uh you know tolerance uh to 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 deal with but mm. uh yeah i got to see uh i went to trinity college and uh, now uh, do you know if they still have the book of kells kells yeah they do still it's, it's still, but yeah it's still their like their main kind of attraction although the libraries in trinity college are really cool if you go through all of those they're they're really fancy old school libraries and the yeah. book of kells is in there there it's beautiful isn't it it's yeah. really really nice i seem to remember yeah. the 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 library I went to uh and it's like uh it that that room was huge yeah uh, I, to, to, for those who've never been, I, I would I would liken it to like the 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 throne room at the end of Star Wars. You know when Leia was given uh, Luke and Han their their uh, medallions and stuff. That uh, big long hallway and the huge arching. That that's yeah. that's what I remember. And, and at the far far end of this library is this little room. I don't know if they haven't set up there, but it was like, uh, you know, I'm exaggerating, but it, it was uh, compared to that, the, the hall, it was like a broom <laughs> closet that mm. you got to go, that you went in and they didn't allow any cameras. So, you know, you had to leave your mm -hmm. camera and, and phone or whatever, but yeah. uh, you go in there and uh, the, the book of kills is sitting there under glass. And uh, I, I was told that each day they turned the page so That's you right. go go back uh, each day and and see like a different page, but my God, the the intricacy and and the the artwork of that of that 
Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's it's amazing, you know, what 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 we used to do back in back in the days of yore when people had had cooler things or less cool things to be doing and um in printing things on volume and copying out the Bible. Um, they went to a lot of effort to save a lot of those books the monks did way back when because Ireland has a lot of like round towers and the trick was when the Vikings would come to raid your village and take your fancy books and things you'd go off into the round tower pull the ladder up after you and no one could get you um, so that's why we have so, like relics and things like the, the book accounts mm. thank god for round towers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no more no more books yeah. Yeah, Ireland is really kind of the I think we're the land of saints and scholars is what I think we're officially titled as so we got a lot of these kind of cool old book things thanks to some monks yeah. <laughs> exciting times it, it, and when i what i thought was really cool was you know uh they they didn't they don't you guys don't tear down a lot of the like the the the, the castle ruins and stuff that because i remember uh, uh particularly when i was like uh, on, on the bus uh traveling from uh dublin down to cork uh you know we'd be passing through the fields and it was all uh, it was also the very first time i ever saw a sheep i mean i see pictures <laughs> really? of I, I saw pictures of them but i never saw a sheep in wow. like real life uh so i got to learn a lot about sheep and and uh you know the uh, uh they do like little paint paint marks on the rumps of the sheep and uh it was funny the uh the the, the bus driver uh every once in a while he'd get like on the the little microphone and stuff saying okay well if, because it wasn't a tour i mean it was a, it was a actual bus that went down you know traveling bus uh but uh he said yeah if you ever uh, and he and, and he did this whole i i think he was joking uh but he was like yeah yeah the 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 sheep uh have uh uh the the paint marks on their own and uh you know they you see the the blue paint marks means that the the sheep is a boy and the pink <laughs> um, paint is, uh, it means it's a girl. And if it has blue and pink on it, it means it's gay. It's like, <laughs> it's like okay. and it's like, you know, these dumbass Americans, you know, it's just like, you want to like smile, kind of nod your head. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's like, Isn't that nice? Nah, you're full of shit, aren't you? <laughs> so, so, but, yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I learned about sheep and and, and yeah, mm -hmm. and every once in a while you'd you'd see a a, a mm -hmm. castle, just uh, you know, chilling, off, off a, chilling off a, on on the field. Oh. Um, was, That's true. It, it, it was pretty wild because I, I I knew that the friend of mine that that told me uh to not go on any tours, uh, he uh he and I would talk a lot about um. Irish politics, and and again, you know, this was back in '98 when the the mm. the uh, I think the the peace accord was kind of beef yeah. up and back and forth. Uh, mm -hmm. So I I had like my my agenda of things and places I wanted to see. Yeah. Uh, for example, when I went to Dublin, I uh, took a bus to uh, I forget the name of the town, but it's it's just that right outside of Dublin. It's like a suburb of Dublin. And mm -hmm. I went to uh, St. Enda's uh, Boys' School. Oh, with, interesting. Uh, and uh, then I went to... Uh, uh, and again, for, for, for those of you who want the hell's out of the significance of that, uh, that mm -hmm. the, the St. Enda's is the school where uh, Patrick Pierce and uh, his, I think his uh, younger mm -hmm. brother, Willie, and uh, those are the people that... Uh, Patrick Pierce was the, the one that... Uh, or one of the leaders of the uh, 1916 uprising in Dublin. Yep. Mm -hmm. And of course, when I was in Dublin, I went to the G, uh, G, uh, GPO. Yay. And uh, <laughs> and I, I I actually I I I got my I got like an international calling card, and I went to the GPO <laughs> and I called my friend that that I was referred to earlier. I said, Rich, Rich, you never know where I'm calling from, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it was like oh. I, I think it was like two o'clock in the morning here and it was like, it's like, dude dude wake up i'm standing at the gpo yeah. <laughs> and, oh. and then uh i went to uh Kilmaining jail uh that's a cool place glass demon cemetery got yep. to see all the uh the uh, uh, uh 
you know, the, the Celtic uh, headstones and stuff or, you know, yeah. uh, Plunkett and uh, Mark, uh, Countess Markovitz and Yeah. Uh, yeah, so and then, uh, yeah, so then, then I went from, from Dublin to down to, to your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually had to, at the time I had a, uh, had a pen pal oh. in Co Cork. Oh, cool. And uh, met up with her and uh, she, she took me over to the Blarney Castle. Oh, yes. And uh, she was like, now, uh, I'll leave it up to you if you really want to do it. But, you know, we'll walk up and stuff like that. But she's like, you, you, <laughs> she warned me. It's like, it's up to you. You may or may not want to kiss the stone. Stone, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. And she told me why, but I, I, I did get the cool thing was I, I, I did get to go up there, and, uh, and God, it's, and see that's another thing. If if I if I went out there again, I would not be able to make it up those stairs. <laughs> that's a lot of stairs. No way in hell. Yeah. Mm. But I was able to get it up to the top uh, of the roof and look over, and then uh, I. Uh, yeah, the two guys there stationed at, at the stone. It's like, well, I, I don't want to kiss the stone, but can I, can, can I just like look down? And I was I was able to like yeah. look down through that 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 space uh -huh. in between the the in you know uh, between the 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 stone and uh, mm -hmm. the the walkway there. So that was yeah, that was kind of neat. So we kind of and then it was like, okay, that's nice. Took a few pictures. Okay, walk back down. <laughs> you're making me realize how much kind of old stuff is around me that i don't notice at all because you were talking about ruined castles and things i don't think i've ever not lived in a place that wasn't next to a ruined castle really? I'm just thinking about it yeah absolutely i kid you not there was one just down the bottom of my road where i where i grew up and only part of it was ruined it was actually um the de Berg house was in um in nace in county kildare and it's in fact where chris de Berg and his family lived um, uh -huh. And they have like a whole wood section out of a private wood and they've only like the west wing, I think, left of the building from what was originally there. But it used to be able to go in um, and they used to let the schools and stuff go in and go around there. So that used to be at the bottom of my road. And then I was just thinking, I was like, is there any ruined castles <laughs> near me right now? And I'm like, actually, yes, there is. There was like a, a castle in Rochestown just up the road. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> like, there's so much history just sitting around me that I forget about it a lot. You know, I think it's, it needs an outsider to come in and see where you live to to realize these kinds of things. Because like yeah. you talk of, about, you know, seeing Trinity and things like that. And, um, and that's a really cool old kind of building. And I went to university in Maynooth, which is also another really cool old building and it has a castle as part of it um and <laughs> i just making me realize how much old stuff we have <laughs> <laughs> yeah we haven't taken away any of the old stuff we've kind of built around it or kind of you know built into it um so yeah. it's, it's kind of it's kind of cool to hear to, to hear that you know it's nice hearing nice things about your country it's like you got all the old stuff and you're like yeah we do yeah, I, I remember because the next place mm. I went to was Galway. Galway, yeah. And I, I seem to remember there was, uh, and and all it was was a wall, maybe like, tw mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, uh, twenty meters long and maybe you know, uh, ten or twelve meters high. But it was it was it was in, I want to I want to say if I remember correctly, it was like in in the town of Galway. Mm -hmm. But it was like just this wall in, uh, you know, in in the sidewalk, and mm -hmm. it was uh, the the last remnants of a cat. And there was like a plaque there saying what what yeah. castle it was from. And uh, uh, I think there was uh, so, some some group of uh, I don't know uh, Vikings or rebel or something like that. that but but something that good, some some group of people were hung there, and there was <laughs> uh, so if you if you look, you know. To, so many meters up, you see the little hook or something like that that's sticking out of the wall where they, yep. they drape the, ro the rope. <laughs> yeah, we like to remember everything. <laughs> I was like, Galway is, is lovely. Did you did you learn any Irish when, while you were in Galway? Because a lot of people in Galway still speak Irish. Uh, I, I did. I uh, One of the places I, uh, I, when I would go to the stores, I did manage to get a, a, a one of those big, thick, like 12 cassette <laughs> things of learning uh learning irish gaelic <laughs> and uh but uh i did uh and it wasn't and it wasn't galway actually where 
Um, I was told about a boys' school there in that area that uh, that it was they they only sp- spoke Irish. They were only permitted yep. to speak Irish. If they spoke yeah. anything else, English or something like that, they, yeah. e- even outside of the classrooms, if they were just in their rooms, you know, talking, yeah. if they spoke anything mm-hmm. other than Irish, they were you know. There was like a, a reprimand type of thing to the point where it's like, okay, yeah. where they they were verbally uh, told not to do it, then they got written up, and then if they broke that rule enough, they would get kicked out. Yeah, that, that, that sounds about right. Goyle skulls are kind of a popular um, in that part of the world in Galway, and a lot of people do kind of summer camps. Um, called, we call them the Goyle Talks. You go to the Goyle Talks and during the summer, and you go away for like, um, you know, through, <laughs> you go away for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, and you speak nothing but Irish the entire time you're there. Um, and it's just you and a bunch of kids in the middle of nowhere, like literally, and you, you would stay with like p- local people. Um, so you, each house would have like a lady of the house we call her the ban on tea and she'd be in charge of kind of your meals and stuff like that um and it was amazing it sounds like the most boring thing you could ever do but i think i suppose people who go to summer camps often have fond memories um but i've always have i have great memories of going to the guelta and you wouldn't even notice you were speaking irish after like the first week or two and my irish was terrible i couldn't speak two words of it and before you know it you're speaking away and you're dancing at kaylee's every night and that's fantastic a fantastic fun so galway always has fond memories for me because they have loads of Gwaeltuk areas up around there and a lot of people go for the summer and of course they got Gwael skulls and things too where everybody speak Irish. Irish got kind of popular for quite a while actually it got really really trendy um, but it's a shame that it's not it's not used more I think because um, I have a degree in Irish oh, wow. um, and, I, <laughs> and I never get to use it for anything. Uh-huh. Yeah I used, I used to love I used to love Irish a lot um, so I learned it when I was in university and I was like why, why not um, so yeah I, Irish is kind of cool but completely completely unused which is sad because we try very hard to still you know have your own language while while you have one but a lot of people in Ireland don't really care about talking Irish anymore and especially because you have to learn it in school it's a compulsory subject and the way they teach Irish is horrible Mm -hmm. (laughs) so nobody likes it so nobody likes it but it's a beautiful Uh, language I hope it I hope it lives long (laughs) it's a beautiful sounding language Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, when I was in Galway, uh, I, I told my friends, like, look, dude, I, I have to go on one tour yeah. because I, I wasn't I wasn't going to learn how to drive on the other side of the street. <laughs> um, and that's one of the cool things I liked about <laughs> Dublin is that the, the crosswalks in Dublin, they have, uh, you know, I guess they're looking at for dumbass Westerners. <laughs> <laughs> where they have a an arrow says you know uh, pointing to the other direction saying look this way too or something like that yeah. <laughs> uh, so you know uh but we uh, I, I did take one tour and it was to the cliffs of more oh yeah mm-hmm. and uh and i think i it, i'm thinking they may have done up the the visiting uh section of, or visitor place on that because when Again, this is 98. I don't remember if they, I don't think they had guardrails on the no. trail. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't think so either. They didn't when I went. and It's been a good number of years since I went, but that place is wholly unsafe. <laughs> mm, and, and they said, it's well, it, it, oh, yeah. It, it's, and they think. said, well, they, they could, it, it's like, well, you could, you want, if you want, you could look over the edge of the cliff, but. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a hat on, take it off. Mm-hmm. If you have glasses on, take them off. And don't just like don't walk upright going to the edge of it's like okay, you you okay. That trail is specifically put there. If you leave the trail, get down on your hands and knees or even more so down on your stomach and just kind of mm-hmm. shuffle yourself out there. Yeah. And feel free to, to you know, peer the top part of your, you know, like from the nose up to look over the, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's like, <laughs> how, how many, it's like, a, a, what like a, I want to say like an 800 foot drop mm-hmm. down to the, the ocean. And it's, it's, the, the, it's the ocean there. So you're getting a wind from the ocean coming up the, 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 the face of the cliff. And it was raining. Mm-hmm. 
when <laughs> when we went there. Of course, it's Ireland. It's always raining. And, <laughs> and, I dare you expect sunshine. I think I think I think I saw the sun maybe two days of the the two weeks that I was there. The rest of the time it was raining. <laughs> but the the wind. Uh, first of all, just trying to walk against the wind. I mean, uh, mm. that that was difficult. I mean, yeah, I was putting everything I had just to to move forward, and then <laughs> with, with the rain basically falling sideways and hitting your face. My God, that hurt. Cause that's, I mean, the the rain hitting your face that fast. That's that shit yeah. stings. <laughs> but God, it was well, a beautiful sight. Um. Interesting fact about the Cliffs of Moher. Um, if you've seen the movie The Princess Bride, yep. um, that's the Cliffs of Insanity is the Cliffs of Moher. Oh, that's really? the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the footage. It was filmed just uh, it was filmed along there. Oh wow. <laughs> so that's like my claim to fame. The Cliffs of Insanity. They were in Ireland all along. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> with no guardrails <laughs> <laughs> i swear like every other you know couple of weeks especially during the summer a helicopter has to go in to rescue somebody from the cliffs of moher uh, <laughs> yeah it's a bit of, yeah it's a bit of a it's a bit of a wild place but um that's a cool it's a cool one to go visit like if you're going to do a tour yeah i think that's probably a good one to have done a tour of um for sure that's good. Did you head anywhere else, or was like Galway like the end of your trip? Uh, go. Uh, I stayed there, and then I went back to uh, to Dublin uh, mm-hmm. and stayed there for another few days before coming back home. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, it was it was it was pretty neat. And uh, when I met up with uh, my my pen pal in Cork, um, mm-hmm. one of the places uh, they 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 took me was um, uh, Cove. Yeah, Cove. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just across the water from me actually i can see cove from my window oh cool okay <laughs> yeah i'm on the other side of cove and just across the river there's like a ferry that goes between my house and cove <laughs> there's a car ferry so yeah so that, that's uh and, and they told me that was the that was uh one of the places that the the, the titanic was yep. docked yep mm-hmm that's true. Yeah, they have a they have a maritime museum there, um, where what to do with the Titanic is I think it was the last place it stopped before it continued off on its voy- and on its terrible voyage across mm. the sea. But yeah, Cove is a, has got a, like a beautiful cathedral as well. It's down on the the waterfront, and they still have actually um, cruise liners and things like that stop into Cove. Okay. Um, Cork has like a really deep harbor for no, for for no reason, <laughs> so you get these really <laughs> large boats very close to like the city and stuff like that, um, which is which is kind of cool. But Co- Cove is a nice spot, even if it's a little bit rough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I I remember all the uh, all the different uh, uh, I think uh, some of the places I went to uh, just consumer wise, I'd I'd go to like these. Uh, um, record stores and um i get like videos and then that's where i got my my uh, learn learn irish videotape series um <laughs> uh, but er- it's like every music store that i would go into they were playing one, one of three things uh like over the, over their pa system and stuff number one they were playing u2 because mm-hmm. duh <laughs> uh, but the other two and I don't know if it, I'm sure you heard of one. I don't know about the other, but the other one uh, they kept playing was the cores. Oh yeah, they used to be a real big thing. Yeah, and it was it was mm. like in '98, so it was a good three years, I think, before America even heard of the cores. Ah, huh. interesting. They did, it? and 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 the other. So I got a whole bunch of cassette tapes of the cores. <laughs> <coughs> and oh, then, cassettes. And then another one that I kept hearing from uh, the of is uh, Robbie Williams. Oh, okay, he's an English singer, but I'm I'm not surprised. So yeah. I got uh, mm-hmm. I got some of his tapes. And, and <laughs> in fact, one of his his first album here in America wasn't even any new material. It was basically <laughs> some of his more popular songs taken from his previous three albums that he had over in England. So. <laughs> And he called it, and he called it, you know, because I, I remember the name of it, uh, The Ego Has Landed. Uh, so, uh, so that was... That's kind of cool. 
you got away with finding kind of normal music. I thought you would have been like laden down with all the stuff they have for tourists, like traditional music and Christy Moore and whoever else I can think of that sings kind of the diddly ass songs. Because um, um, if you go past any of the tourist shops in like Dublin or Cork, they'll have this music blasting really loud and tons of Irish flags and souvenirs hanging outside. So um, you did good to avoid all the, the regular stuff and find some <laughs> actually interesting music. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I try to, uh, yeah, I, I try my best to uh, not not go into any of the tourist tracks because because yeah. another thing I I, uh, I managed to do when I was in Cork, uh, I think it was like the first, uh, it was the first the first night the train uh, came in that I I, I got my uh, uh, found out where my my uh, my bed at the uh, the hostel was going to be, and I you know, pe- you know checked my bags all in, um, mm-hmm. and uh, so I was like, well, I'll, I'll kind of just. Go go walking around in, in uh, you know downtown Cork, and uh, I I I, uh, I can't remember what it, but it was ba- it was basically like a church service, not a church service, but like a meeting, and mm-hmm. uh, is it, but they had a little, bunch of music they were playing music and stuff like that, so I kind of walked in and said oh, okay, uh, you know, um, it was open to the public, so I was like all right, I'll go in and. Uh, so I, I I met some people and and just talking with them and stuff, and uh, one of them's like, yeah. "Well, would you like to come over tomorrow for for uh, uh, for dinner?" I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, sure." So you know, so the they they uh, the the following night, the husband came out, picked me picked me up at the hostel, and uh, we went to uh, to his house, and I remember they had two kids, and the, the, yeah. the kids were just adorable. Uh, oh. they, they were, so we were kind of, uh, making jokes about the difference between, you know, Irish and America and, and, uh, they, they thought I was so mm-hmm. funny because I called, uh, chips, French fries and, uh, <laughs> what the, and, uh, wow. and, uh, so at, after the kids, uh, went to bed, I was, was talking with the, 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 the couple and, um, I remember we were just talking about, uh, you know, the, Again, just the the, the different uh, cultures and differences, mm-hmm. and they they were, um, I think they were, uh, they were absolutely shocked. I mean, profoundly shocked that uh, divorce was legal here in America and how much percentage yeah. of marriages mm-hmm. ended up in divorce, and they they just couldn't yes. get over that. Mm-hmm. It's true. Divorce is like a relatively new thing in Ireland. It's only in the past like. That even 10 15 years that we we have a have divorce and it's still kind of i don't know it's not it's not commonplace yet so that makes does that make sense yeah not, not commonplace yet but mm-hmm. but it's amazing to have been able to travel um as a man and feel entirely safe doing what you just did meeting a complete stranger and going to their house for dinner <laughs> although yeah. that's so that's so Irish, actually. That's so Irish because um, we used to um, play a lot of kind of gaming events up in the university in Cork here in UCC. And you would get um, international students all the time. And and we would do the exact same thing as in, especially around Christmas time when we find the, like the Americans and things like that couldn't go home. I was like, why not come to our house for dinner? We always had everyone around for Christmas dinner. Um, and it's so, it's so Irish. Like, come around for dinner. We, we'll, we'll make dinner for you. And we, yeah, I think it's just to do with the famine you know we were just hungry for so long but now that we have some sort of food we're like oh we'll feed everybody <laughs> no one will starve <laughs> oh, that's such a lovely irish story it's so typical <laughs> it's like come around for dinner meet everybody and we'll have a chat like yeah that that is actually ireland to a tea i'm glad you had such a nice experience that's awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, they, they didn't turn out to be uh, axe murderers or no. you know the the uh, <laughs> uh, Firefly family from uh, you know some Rob Zombie movie. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think our, our like Irish people are so ridiculously innocent. Although we're moving up in kind of the range of serial killers and murders and stuff. Oh, like I remember when the very first real murder that was on like the news and stuff was in Ireland, and I think it's in it's a, probably around the time you came to visit. It must have been between ninety four and ninety five, and there was a, a French lady that was murdered in Cork, 
and they still haven't discovered who did it. Um, they're they're trying to pin it on somebody else, or there's been a whole lot of um, problems about it. But I'll never forget it being on the news and everyone being horrified. Like it was it was like shocking that somebody w- was killed. So this is mid nineties. That's how far behind we are on serial killings and whatnot. So you were totally safe going to a stranger's house. <laughs> we've no con- we've no concept of murders yet. <laughs> we're ca- we're catching up. Catching up. Oh <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. yeah, but if yeah, I, I would say if I, if I would do that again, I'd, I'd, I I don't know if I'd be able to. Yeah, I, I can't even travel within the states here without getting like totally tired, and just oh yeah, just, uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm just happy and lucky that we we uh I got like a a a gaming con that goes on right here in the, in the Charlotte, so I could I could go to that and uh, until you know. Do, do, do the games as as we usually do until like two or three in the morning. Come home, sleep in my own bed, and mm-hmm. get up like three yeah. hours later, and then go back to the hotel. <laughs> that is the best thing about local cons, isn't it? Being able to go home to your own bed whenever you want. Yes, um, we we've, we've won a local one once a year in January, and it is the best thing ever to be able to show up early, game all day, go home about six o'clock, and have your own food, your own bed, and and have a shower. And then, like, go back and do it all again. Mm. <laughs> and everyone else is hungover and exhausted. And I'm like, ah, this is so good. It's so much better than traveling long distances. <laughs> it's way less stuff to worry about when you can come back to your own house. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, had a, I had a lot of fun over there. And uh, cool. in fact, when, uh, when I uh, was be- meeting up with my my pen pal in Cork, uh, she... Uh, uh, I was I was over at at, at her family's uh, house for dinner, and uh, after dinner she was like, uh, "So we talked about stuff." And she says, and, "And I was telling her about that I I, I liked a lot of, uh, you know, my, my my exposure to TV and stuff over there was like the BBC America, so uh, I would watch the you know, the Monty Pythons and uh, good you know, taste the, stuff like that." <laughs> and yep. she's like, uh, "Oh, you you like?" Uh, I was like, "She's like." I got a show to, 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 so I was like, okay, so we, uh, so her and her husband and I sit in a living room and, uh, she gets out this VHS tape and she introduces me to Father Ted. Yes. I hoped you were going to say that. <laughs> and it was, and she said, uh, now that the show is no longer in production because I think, uh, the, the head actor, uh, That's died right. earlier that yeah. week or not, not, not that week, that earlier uh, that year. Because uh, yeah, this was still ninety eight, but uh, yeah. yeah, when when she played uh, me a, sh- a few episodes of that, I just fell in love. <laughs> with that show. So of course, what the next time I went to a music store or uh, a store, I was like, do you have any Father Ted tapes? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, uh, that was uh, yeah. So I, I think if I think if I was yeah, I I, I love Father Jack. I think if mm-hmm. I was in the priesthood, I would be Father Jack. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be in the corner That's and awesome. just, you know, oh, Father Ted, would you like to have a nice cup of tea? What do you say to the cup of tea? Back off, Back cup! Off, cup. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, but Father Ted is kind of a, a special thing in, in our own hearts here in Ireland. Because when Father Todd came out first, it was really scandalous because it was oh, making sure. fun of priests. <laughs> yes, and everybody loved priests. Like it was the kind of thing my my grandparents would turn off on the television if it came on. Um, because this notion of making fun of priests, although when you look back at it now, it's a, it's a little dated or a little awkward. Some of the jokes, but it like it's the kind of thing that people make jokes about in the in your everyday speech like it, you know it's so quotable that everyone just makes constant jokes or father ted references without even noticing anymore <laughs> um, it was a, it was a, fa- it was a fabulous show it, like the best episode is the eurovision episode um because <laughs> ireland had this big thing about eurovision right um uh-huh. and for a couple of years in the 90s we won it back to back like so much so that ireland was worried we were going bankrupt because we had to keep hosting the eurovision <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so there's an episode of Father Ted where they're like, we're going to write a song, so we'll go to the Eurovision. And it is the, the best song of all time about a lovely <laughs> that's horse. The, that's the one with the horse? <laughs> yes, my lovely horse. <laughs> my lovely horse. Um, and they it's, make a, it's vi- they so made a v- music video out of it? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> but it's like you know, like horse. They're running around on a horse, and oh, it's just it's it's really good. I always recommend Father's Head to people, um, because it's definitely something um that's a big part a big part of my life and of most Irish people's life. Everybody loves Father's Head. So yeah, I'm glad you were appointed in a good direction because I'm not sure about the rest of Irish television. To be honest, I don't. I think we might have peaked with Father's Head. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but um, but... yeah, it's marvelous stuff. It's just so funny. Yeah, but I I, I always enjoyed Father Jack. Yeah. Drink, fick, earth, stickers, Girl. barrels. <laughs> <laughs> I really think the best episode is the best episode of Father Jack is where he becomes sober and he's like, I'm still on that feckin' island. <laughs> like, it's like I've been here this whole time and he drunk his shoe for it. I didn't even know. Yeah, so it's fine. It's fab. It's it's super fun. And the the guy that um made it or helped make it, Graham Linehan, went on and then made a series called Black Books. Don't know if you've seen that, but I that haven't. is hilarious too. Okay. That's uh, is, that's like almost Father Ted levels of funny, but with English people. Okay. <laughs> so that that's definitely where we're looking at. Uh, the, who's the lead in that? Dylan Moran is the, the guy who's who's the lead in that. It's 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 fantastic. So if you, if you okay. like Father Ted, you should check out Black Books. Okay. So yeah, it's got some good some really good comedians in it, and it, it's it's aged well. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and then, and then another one uh, she showed me, which is not on, on the comedy spectrum, is mm. uh, Belly Kiss Angel. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, you're going back in time. Like, <laughs> I haven't heard Belly Kiss Angel in years. It's I was like, like what's that about the village priest? Isn't that to say we're following around this priest in a village, but he's kind of in love with a barmaid, but he yeah, can't be in love yeah, with a barmaid because he's a I priest? I was like, is... <laughs> And, and I forget, I, I, I don't even know how many oh, wow. seasons it, but it's not, oh, yeah, it was wow. like usually that was the, the, the formula that they would use. Sooner or later, this priest was, was getting with the, the barmaid. <laughs> barmaid, yeah. And, or some, some, you know, cute, you know, young lass in, in the, the Pelican. Uh, so. Yeah. Oh, God. I haven't heard that one in a, lot, a long time. I think you might have missed Glenn Rowe. That was the other really famous Irish like soap we had, okay. um, like in the early nineties and stuff. And it used to be on, um, after Dallas on like a Sunday night. So like you'd sit down with your family and you'd all watch Glen Rowe and you'd watch Dallas. So that's how far back I'm going. Wow. And it was another really terrible soap opera with a lot of people in Aaron jumpers who were farmers <laughs> and who were having all sorts of, you know, life issues um, and falling in love with each other and out of love with each other and all that kind of stuff. Um, but that was that that was like that was the heights of television when we only had two channels. You'd had RT1 and RT2 and those were your options. <laughs> and this was it. And the whole country would sit down and watch Glen Row um, and Dallas. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's my, that's like, that's like my upbringing right there. We were, they're good, good times. The Glen, Glen, Glen Row, though, was hilarious. When I think back of it, how did they make that into a TV show? Apparently they did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're good, good, good times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure there's something to be proud of or not, but there certainly is something anybody who lived in Ireland will remember. <laughs> um, um, so yeah. Mm, so yeah, what, what kind of what kind of uh, shows are are on over there now? Um, that's a really good question because I don't, I don't even have a TV anymore. Uh, okay. <laughs> I like, um, like how do I how do I say that? Or like there's there's now three actually there's four channels now in ireland um we went from two to four one of which is entirely in irish so that's tg Cahar. Mm. um and that shows a lot of um football matches and things like that to lure people in because it doesn't matter if the commentary is in irish you'd watch it anyway wow. um so that's it's it's stick there's tv3 which kind of has the trendier stuff now to watch there's a lot of good kind of i suppose interesting kind of exposés this is what the the new the tv seems to be interested in so they'll be like they'll do an expose on like greyhound racing or they'll do an expose on like nursing homes that kind of stuff seems to be kind of popular hmm. um but I, but I haven't really noticed kind of i suppose much else i don't know i always think irish tv is quite quite bland i guess we've all turned to netflix nowadays and 
um, and all other sorts of streaming services or illegal ways of, yeah. of watching your television. <laughs> <laughs> that I haven't had, that I haven't, uh, I'm glad I moved on from the years when I only had two TV channels to watch. <laughs> uh, now the world's at my fingertips, I'll never uh, go back. Got, uh, 500 <laughs> channels or something like that, and with uh, all the, the <laughs> streaming services, movies, and stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the world's a much bigger place, a much bigger place these days, so you don't have to settle for all the, the kind of local stuff, but you can watch it on the on the website there's an rt website too you can always just go if you thought something sounded interesting and have a watch and see what the story is mm. but yeah there's nothing huge good nothing huge come out of here i don't think in a while or if there is i haven't noticed <laughs> mm. i may not be alert enough to be in tune with new television to be honest uh, um yeah yeah because <laughs> i'm playing board games <laughs> <laughs> you're making you're making your own uh, uh adventures and, and dramas and and uh <sighs> Stuff like that. Yeah, that, that exactly. That's how I kind of view, uh, especially like the the. Uh, um, that that's why I'm big in like theme of a of a board game. It's like okay, well, mm -hmm. you know, a, a zo you know we're, we're killing zombies or something like that. Okay, well, this is uh, how's this? Because uh, when I watch movies, I always kind of like like to put myself in in the you know the the character of like the lead person or somebody and somebody in the movie is like okay how would i react to, to something like this and yeah. uh i kind of that when i play these uh thematic games uh that's kind of mm -hmm. the man, mindset i have it's like okay this that's we're, cool. we're, we're we're uh we're, we're we're writing a movie what's what's the movie gonna be all about how, how's, <laughs> how's this all gonna end and uh -huh. you know of course with cthulhu everybody dies at the end nice. Or goes crazy. <laughs> or goes mm -hmm. crazy. Or goes crazy. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of cool that you can kind of get into your character and things like that. It must be great for like role playing and things like that for those games where you can really, you know, take on the the, the role of somebody else. Mm. It's fun. Yeah, that's fun, fun stuff. It's sure. it, it's it's weird for me because it's like back in my my twenties and stuff. I I was I was involved with uh, a lot of theater and I I'd say I. I think uh, kind of like half and half where I, I, I do like plays. Uh, I was in one commercial once and Ooh. then uh, the, maybe half the plays would be like uh, improv, like these, okay. these dinner mystery play improv things where we'd have, mm -hmm. we would have, you know, the, the scripted stuff that we would perform in between the, the, uh, you know, between the, the plates and, you know, you know, between, mm -hmm between uh appetizers and main course we'll do like a scripted thing but okay. while uh but while the people were eating we would go out and mingle and talk with them as as our characters and uh just do improv with them and we always kind of like uh so we would uh, that's when uh the 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 patrons there would be like asking us questions about well okay and they're trying to solve the the mystery that we're you know performing and I, re I remember we would uh, we would like to always like screw with each other because it's like, oh, what, oh, what you uh, you want to know about this, but you really need to ask Benton over there about oh. uh, the, the woman that he met in France in Paris. <laughs> of course, that whole thing is a red herring has absolutely nothing to do with the, the, the mystery we're doing. <laughs> the poor actor that's playing Benton doesn't know anything about it. You know, so it's like. So the, the people <laughs> eating dinner is like, they think it's a big thing. So, so it's like, hey, Benton, come over here. What, what, what about that woman you met in Paris? And of course, the poor actor that, that's playing, he had to, it's like, he has to come, so, pull something out of his ass and improv mm -hmm. something that, that would at least, you know, be engaging or make the people think that it was, you know, really something. Uh, uh, that, that even pertain to the the mystery that they're trying to solve. So we, we, we like to like screw each other, we bit with each other oh. when we do that. Uh. That's that's pretty awesome. Um, I'm not particularly good at getting into character myself, so I'll usually like emulate my character on someone from television or from books or things. So like in my uh, the the my current role playing scenario, I am the village drunk. Um, and I had a lot of fun adapting it from, and actually another British TV show you might want to check out if you haven't yet, it's called That Mitchell and Webb Look. And it's like a series of comedy sketches, but one of them is about a crazy drunk who thinks he's Sherlock Holmes. 
and I've, and I've had so much fun pretending to be this pretending to be this person um so I can't get inside of them but I, I like to draw I like to draw from other things so then you know kind of where to where to take yourself I always I always wish I had more of an acting background I can't I can't think independently like you and imagine things but I can emulate stuff <laughs> so that's quite fun yeah it's it's well it's weird for me now because I'm I'm so I think my brain is so uh been through a lot <laughs> my body and brain has just been through a lot that mm -hmm. uh uh i think back as those years i was like i can't do that anymore I, i'm not that that quick mm -hmm. uh, thinking is like so so particularly with like role-playing games it's like i i i kind of shy away from doing the role play and i'm more of like the the uh the murder hobo just just tell me <laughs> <laughs> who I need to attack? What do I need to roll to do it? And let, yeah. let me go at them. Let's go but, at them. So it's mm -hmm. called that that Mitchell and Webb look. Yeah, that's right. Or that Mitchell and Webb look. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Write, write it down. That's really funny. Uh, I, I, that's, that, I'm writing it. <laughs> more more great British um, comedy, but yeah, I love I love that character. I love that character so much that I made I made my role play character based around them. <laughs> And the, the best bit about it is you don't really have to make decisions because you're crazy and you're drunk. So you just do whatever you want and nobody minds. Um, <laughs> so it's that, that, that's been, that's been my, that's been the most fun I think I've had with a character. In ages. <laughs> <laughs> just, you just to not have to care or worry that what you do has to make sense. <laughs> it's very liberating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, just roll with the crazy, keep going with it. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's, okay. it's good. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Um, but like, you know what you're saying as well about, you know, how you're when you've been through a lot, sometimes your brain doesn't, you know, isn't as sharp as it used to be or it doesn't work the way it used to. Um, and I know I find that with playing board games, too. I'll have like a phase where I can play specific games and I'm OK with the bigger games. And then my brain will just shut down and go, actually, you're not going to do any of these things at all. In fact, you can't play a board game. Try and try and assemble, assemble it together. Um, and I always wonder, you see, ever, I don't know, if you kind of talk to people about playing board games, it almost feels like they're playing them all of the time or whenever they can. And everyone's always ready to have their brain switched on and firing on all cylinders and tackle whatever it might be. Um, and I just, I just, <laughs> it's just whatever you said kind of made, made, made me, made me think about it, that, you know, we're not always switched on for everything all of the time, even though you might like to be. Right. Hmm. Yeah, that's my inside of the day. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, <laughs> so that took a complete tangent. Um, but yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, you uh, and you mentioned uh, some some uh, some of the, the the British show shows. Uh, mm. I think because uh, I got I got to say some some of the British shows you guys over over there is like especially at the the, the dramas. <laughs> And yeah. the, the mysteries, it's like they're, each episode is like a, a whole production movie type thing. Because it's <laughs> like there, there is, there is, uh, there's two, two series in particular that I, I always loved was, uh, one was Waking the Dead. I was a big fan of Robson Green. Mm. And he, he was in like two, two or three of them. One where he played a, 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 a D.I., uh mm -hmm. it was a so it was like the the crime drama thing and then the other one uh he just he played a uh psychologist that would mm. uh the the uh the the police uh police would hire him to do these little uh, psychological profiles on their mm -hmm. on the type of per criminal that they were looking for but uh huh. but sh shows like waking the dead because i I guess I'm, I'm retired forensics, and yep. uh, Waking the Dead was cool because it would, uh, they, they'd have like a crime. It's typically like a, a usually it was a murder or something, but mm -hmm. uh, there was some. There would always be an element or some, some tie in, that would uh, go back to a cold case that happened years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they would like use. Okay, so as they were solving the 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 murder at hand, they're also using the 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 you know the, the up to date techniques and technology and stuff to simultaneously mm -hmm. also solve the cold case. And, you know, 
So mm-hmm. I, I thought I, I really liked the shows like that. And, oh. uh, That's pretty cool. I think that like the UK just put out a lot of kind of um, murder mystery kind of shows or crime dramas and things as well. They do seem to have a lot of them now that I think about it. I probably couldn't tell most of them apart. Um, but no, not quite Murder, She Wrote, but close. We've, they've all their, their their own kind of levels of Murder, She Wrote, like mm-hmm. Poirot and all those, yeah. and Midsummer Murders. Yeah. Um, I'm trying I'm trying to remember, I remember half of them, but there's, there's loads of those things. But it's interesting, I think, how nowadays a lot of those real crime um, shows have become really popular, especially on Netflix and things like that, where you see people going back in with forensics into cold cases and you know um and you know exonerating people or you know having new new evidence um and i i gotta ask because you know a bit about forensics it's like is that does that look real or do you ever watch any of those shows yourself uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just put you on the spot now <laughs> i i do <laughs> they do take a lot well when i because uh, i the 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 the, uh, the uh discipline of forensic that I specialized in was uh, forgery detection and question documents. Oh, cool. Uh, so <laughs> the, uh, not DNA testing, every, but close. No, the, <laughs> we had a word like for uh, testifying as expert witness in court. So we had, we had to deal with uh, what, what, what most people would call like the, the CSI factor uh, where it's like the, either they would think that, a crime was going to be uh, solved within like, you know, 44 minutes with, you know, with so many minutes left over for commercials. Mm-hmm. Um, or I, I, I did, I, I did hear one um, instant where uh, a lady uh, was, I think she was robbed, uh, but she basically had, uh, because she felt she saw enough episodes of CSI, uh, basically came up with her own little, you know, you know, case file. Oh, wow. And as a result, we weren't able. To, nobody was able to do anything with it because she basically tainted all the evidence. Evidence. Oh God. So, <laughs> and and so- uh, as, as like a question document examiner, I, I'd always get people. And when when I get calls from lawyers, they they would un, I, I wouldn't get it from them because they would understand. But if I was talking to just you know a, a average Joe Blow out on the street, it's like they would call me and the number one they would think I'm their advocate, which I'm not. They would think I'm their like drinking buddy, which I'm not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, or they'll think I'm their therapist, which I'm not. <laughs> and so before I'm, I mean, and I and I I tried not to be. <laughs> rude but you know you spend like a, an hour or so talking to him on the phone uh just just talk about well so and so did this and i don't trust it and and then and this this is the person i think wrote this and and the reason why they think they were because they did this and they're sleeping with this person over here and they they, they stole money from this person here and i don't know what's so, and i was like can you all right can you at least tell me which page is the question signature on just just tell me that <laughs> and let me do my job. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh yeah, that's all. That's yeah, that's awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess you know all of these crime shows, you know, have a consequence. <laughs> Yeah. You know, whether people trying to gather their own evidence. You think that's the first thing you learn in these crime shows. It's like, don't touch anything. Don't taint anything. Bag right. it, you know. Make sure you, no one's near it. Use the tweezers. Take care of it and store it properly somewhere. <laughs> you know, I don't know. That's what television has taught me anyway. And to also <laughs> never need a lawyer in the States. Man. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure my view is entirely tainted by television and all the people that seem to be put in prison that don't belong there. Um, that are proved correct afterwards. But I'm just like, wow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, like how the courts work in Ireland isn't any better. But there's there's something about all the sensationalism of it all that you all get caught up in, you know. Yeah, so, you're like I would never want that to happen to me in a million years. <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and good stuff. So obviously, you know, you've got some new TV shows now. You can look out, look out for, and see see if you enjoy any of them. Hopefully, you will. Okay. Um, 
the one with the, 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 uh, the, the black books, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that Mitchell and Webb look. Look, yeah. You'll probably, well, it's a pretty unique title. I assume you've watched Black Adder, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Because you said Monty Python, so I assumed Black Adder. They kind of go hand in hand for yeah. some reason. Yeah. <laughs> <Don't they? laughs> That's good. <laughs> and of course, Father Ted, yes. the the godfather of it all. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I swear that money was only resting in my account. <laughs> Such a good show. <laughs> Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, Father Ted, uh, you were the first person on our list. And he looks up <laughs> at the wall. It's like twenty yeah. names. Father Ted all, all scratched off and he's this name way down at the bottom <laughs> yeah bad. oh god yeah they're good times now I want to rewatch it actually I must have been a rewatch it and rewatch them again I spent so long quoting them that it's about time I, I, I give them my full attention um, for sure. uh, you, yeah. they, had, they had a spider baby <laughs> they kept it in a prop <laughs> are you sure you, that wasn't a dream you had oh no no it was, it was Oh, yeah, yeah. And then he pulls out that diagram. He said, remember yes, what we yes. were talking about? And he's like, reality, <laughs> imagination, or dreams or something. Dreams of reality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With the ponies hopping back and forth between, like, his brain. And I, yeah, it's such, it's such a good show. What's even funnier is there's, like, a fairground scene in that where they, they go to the field because they're having some sort of fair. Right. And they have all these tents and writes it up. And that, that's almost accurate. <laughs> I'm like that. That does almost look like a, a fair in Ireland. Oh, time. really? <laughs> yeah, we didn't. We didn't really do the big kind of carnivals or, or stuff like that. You'd have like the village fair. There'd be like pig races and stuff like that. So yeah, I just you you just look at the little tents. You're like, God, it's not a million miles away from the truth. It's just slightly more dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what's funny about Father Chad is that it hits awfully close to home. <laughs> like it's it's almost there, but just just a level a level up, so we can laugh at it, um, because you know that isn't us, but it's not a million miles away from us. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. So uh, yeah, you have you have a YouTube channel and a podcast that you yeah. do. So if people want to go and check those out, uh, where where can they go? Um, so I'm under the, the name of Board Game Inquisition and if you Google it, you'll find me everywhere because no one else has in Inquisition in their title, so I don't get confused. <laughs> so I do have a website, but I have a, I have a YouTube channel of Board Game Inquisition and I'm on Twitter a lot. So that's BG Inquisition because Twitter has a limit on characters. Um, but yeah, feel free to st stop by, say hello. Um, I'd love, I'd love, I always, I'd always love hearing from people. I think that's the coolest thing about social media and board games: the amount of random people you would never have met or get to interact with across the world, somewhere who have an opinion on the same game that you have an opinion on. Mm. It's good stuff. So um, yeah, I'd, lo I'd love, feel free to drop by and say hello. Um, I'd love to meet more people. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. We'll have, and thank uh, you so much. We'll have a link to those yeah. on the uh, show notes on this show. But yeah, thank you so much. It was, this was fun. So yeah. So anybody out there, you you've learned a lot about Ireland. Uh, you've uh, <laughs> you've learned uh, so, got some recommendations of new shows and stuff. And if you haven't <laughs> checked out Father Ted, you gotta. You yeah, know, you got to do that. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. It's been a, a real pleasure, and um, I'm I'm totally honored that you you let me come in your podcast. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, appreciate your uh, availability. Because uh, yeah, it's, it's half <laughs> halfway across the planet. That, that's always kind of difficult to to, to handle. Uh, yeah. I think it, only if you have a life. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all these people with like children and and stuff to do nah i got none of that stuff uh, I'm, I'm i'm ready to go whenever <laughs> <laughs> all righty well thanks so much again and uh yeah stay stay safe and stay healthy over there yeah you too you too take care of yourself kind of important yep Alrighty then thank you so much for smashing that download button Hope you enjoyed uh, this little conversation about uh, Ireland and uh, Father Ted, and I, I, I think we did talk a little bit about, um, yeah, we did talk a little about board games in there somewhere. I don't know, perhaps, maybe in passing. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, 
uh, stay tuned uh, for our next episode uh, where we talk to uh, somebody else about something else. And I don't know, we might cover board games. We might not. Who knows? Just wherever the conversation flows. And uh, until then, uh, if you want to check out more about the Mega Meeple, just go to our website. That's www.themegameeple.com. Uh, all of our uh, episodes from uh, yesteryear are on there. You catch up if you're uh, new here. And uh, go to the social media page. All of our social media craps are right there. Uh, check out the YouTube channel. Check out the Twitter. Check out the Facebook. Blah, 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 blah yada, yada. And uh, we will see you next time.